While I'm here at home, I thought that I should start to do some planning. I'm on maternity leave and I'm getting ready to go back to work. And I wanted to show you what I do for my back to school planning. It might help you, especially if you're a newer teacher or if you're a student teacher. It just um, helps me get my frame of mind so that when I go back and actually have my paid working days, I am able to be more productive and I know exactly what I need to do. I found in years past, if I wait until my actual working days, then I just get bogged down with the planning, which is so critical, and then I don't have as much time to follow through on those plans. So it's almost like wasted time. Whereas when I plan ahead of time, when I go back for those paid days, I can actually implement my plans and get things prepared for the classroom and for the year, and then, um, it will be much more productive. So um, my things are just handwritten right now because it's just a very organic process for me. Um, for me, it just makes more sense to think through my head, write it down as, um, as it just kind of pops in my head. And then I could always organize it later and type it out, which is probably what I'll do for next year as I go through the notes again. But at least for this year, the first year I just, um, jot it out as I'm going and then as I think about it I write it and then as I see it it helps me to remember it so it's just this whole like full circle um, process that I use that's helpful to me so it might be helpful for you if you think better on a computer or where you can edit and change things you can do that too okay so this is the front of the binder um, it's just a purple binder with a little um, clear front and it has my kindergarten standards and this is actually going to work out to be my whole um, binder that I keep everything in my plan book my calendar um, I just want one spot for everything. One of the things that you'll notice about my binder is that it's organized and I've learned that um, and kind of throughout my life as I'm becoming more and more organized is that everything needs a place everything needs a name and a place uh, my husband and I have been doing this budgeting uh, from Dean Ramsey, you know, and in the monthly budget every month you're supposed to give a name to every dollar and put it in its location, which includes even spending money. You know, as long as you name it and you give it an allotted amount, then that's okay. You give it its place. And so I've been implementing that in my binder. And so you'll notice that inside my binder, everything that I put in has a place and has a name. Um, I've just handwritten and, and given everything a title so I can um, find it easily and know what it's called and I could look back to it and just um, know exactly where it's at. All right, this is what the inside of the binder looks like. I'll talk about these sticky notes in just a minute. There's my little baby. <laughs> okay. Um, over here, I labeled the first page back to school prep and this is basically kind of like uh, a what is it called a table of contents and I tried to remember what I just naturally started to do my thinking process and then I wanted to actually write it down so that I could remember to do it every year and um, so that it would take less time if I had a specific routine or process to it and then I could also change anything that I needed to change it will also be helpful for new students or student teachers um, first thing I did as I received my new grade level, which is kindergarten, is to read over the standards and I wanted to highlight the focus areas so I really knew what I was focusing on for that year. Because again in teaching we always want a backwards plan and we want to have the end in mind as we begin teaching. So I'm going to show you what I did as I read over the standards. I printed off all the standards and I labeled again with tabs down the side of my binder so that I could find them and access them easily because it's like a huge book. So I have science, social studies, literature, informational text, foundational skills since I'll be in kinder. And I just did that for each subject so that I could find them easily and I color coded. So science is green, social studies. I started studies. out with science on purpose because I feel like this and the other subjects like social studies, art and health are being really overlooked in education. And I really wanted to see how science could be used as a starting point and we could propel into literature um, and into reading and writing ba uh, based on the science. So I really want to start integrating more to really give students a well-rounded education. Introduction into each subject, I read carefully so I really have a good idea of what it is I'm teaching. I underline some of the big important questions and um, I make down any notes that I'm thinking of or creative ideas. Now about. for social sciences, again, I read through the standards and then secondly, um, I went through and I start taking my creative notes as I get them. 
And then lastly, I actually went back and started to think about how I could put them into units. And so that's why I have these blue sticky notes. I was thinking which ones go together that I could combine and get better units. So you'll see I have two of them put together for fall, winter, and spring so that I could actually cover all the standards but combine them in the way that would make sense. And for me, it made sense to start with self in the fall. These ideas seem to be more um, pertinent to the individual. And then we would go to family in the winter and then the larger world community. So it really starts from self and then it goes out to the world. How um, does the student interact with the world around them? Into literature, and again, it's just another example of um, how I underline and highlight and I make notes and then I go through and I start already thinking about how I could put these into um, units. And I just went ahead and stuck them onto sticky notes for the units. Now I'm at back at the front of the binder I have. At the same time as I was looking over my standards and highlighting focus areas, I couldn't help but get excited about going back to school. It's always an exciting time for me. I get excited about meeting new kids and um, setting up the classroom. So at the same time while I was doing that, I started writing down my classroom setup ideas. And the reason this came out organically from the standards is because I want to set up my classroom in a way that is going to help um, these students meet the standards that they have to meet. My classroom needs to be um, conducive to some of the scientific experiments we will be doing. Some of the um, communities that we will be focusing on and community building for social studies. So the way that I set up the classroom needs to be very purposeful that will help us reach those standards or enhance our interactions with the standards. So I actually ended up with probably about nine pages. What does that say? Yeah, nine little sticky notes of all of these components I want to include in my classroom setup. And it's also just things that I want to do outside of the standards and then other ideas that I have seen on Pinterest or other YouTube um, posters. Over here, this sticky note, again, was as I'm looking at the standards, this came out very organically from looking at the standards. And as I showed you earlier, I started to think about units and how I might put things together. And so this overall is just a very general way of how I plan my year. So I think about each term, plan one unit, and I want to plan a unit for science, social studies, health, and art for each term so that they get um, plenty of opportunities to experience those subjects. And then I needed to think about, well, overall we have fall, winter, spring. How many weeks do I have within those terms? And then I really tried to start breaking down on about how long each unit should last. Now I know this is going to seem like, what? how can you do a fall art unit in just one week? How can you seriously get through a science unit in just three weeks? Well, here's what I do. Again, like I said before, I start with science or the social studies, or the health, or the art, and my plan is to incorporate them, integrate them into the reading, and the writing, and um, other areas. So, it does say three weeks, but I'm planning on spending a lot of time in integrating them into our learning. Over here, I have my notes, integrated, 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 just to remind myself and be very clear, and um, yeah. And over here too, again, I have my note, decide on what to grade ahead of time. So again, we want, always want to start with the end in mind. As I'm planning these units out, I need to choose those pieces that I want to use for grades and keep those in mind for the end goal so that I know where students need to be at the beginning of each term. And that I need to do that at the beginning of August so I'm ready for the end of, um, for the, I'm sorry, for the November grading. And then again in October when I'm thinking about um, March grading and then again in February so that I can be ready for grades and know what I'm going to be grading for the end of the school year. The second thing that I have on my uh, back to school prep list is to make to-do lists. So I really want to make sure that I use my time wisely and my resources wisely. And the best, most expensive resource that our district has are our IAs, our instructional assistants. So I always want to make sure that I use them with students 
And then if there's anything missing, I check YouTube, Pinterest for extra ideas. And so this is where I really want to think about how can people help me do my job? How can my IAs help do things that the teacher doesn't necessarily have to do? Or how can volunteers help? I'm going to show you that page in just a second. Here it is, my IA volunteers to-do list. So these are all the tasks that um, I was brainstorming. What could people help me with so that I could be more efficient and get what I need and only I can do during the, the work day. And then I color coded it based on what needs to get done, what would be awesome and very great if they could do, and then only if there's time, what could my IAs or volunteers help me with. And then I work in a dual language school, so I also need to make sure I go back and clarify if it needs to be only a Spanish speaker or if either an English or Spanish speaker could help me with that since I'm looking at both IAs, instructional assistants, and volunteers. So I went ahead and just made my whole list. You could pause the video at any moment if you wanted to read anything more carefully. But these are just things that I thought about, that things that I've used before or things that I've gotten off um, Pinterest or YouTube. So this hefty list is three pages long, and I even label it here two of three, again, so that I'm just very careful to organize. Okay, go ahead and pause this video again, like I said, if you needed to read anything more carefully. And again, it's a little bit scribbly and scratchy just because it's very organic. Um, it's an organic process for me. After making this list of things of importance based on what needs to get done, what would be great if they could help me with, and then what is like extra only if there's time, I compiled that list to make a new list of what actually needs to get done daily for my IA or volunteer, what could be done weekly, and what could be done monthly, and then what would be done yearly. And so I did this just so that I, it's, for me, it's the next step to actually then create like a checklist for my IA. So when she comes in every day, she knows what um, I need help with, uh, what I need her to do. And it would just be the same every day or, you know, her weekly tasks or monthly tasks or yearly tasks. Just so that it's very clear on what I need help with and is very clear on how she can help me. And then I don't have to go back and just ask for um specific things or clarify or have issues. It'll just be very black and white, have a sit down meeting with her and then any other um, communications that we would have would be just like clarifications. So I did have some questions though because I'm returning off maternity leave. I actually did not start the year with my kindergartners. So I'm going back um, kind of in the middle of the school year, which is a tricky place After to be. I know what my IAs, my instructional assistants are doing and my volunteers. Then I have a better idea and picture of what it is I need to be doing each day, each week, monthly things that I need to be doing, and then again um, yearly. Those routines that I want to do at the beginning of the year, and even the things that I need to do at the end of the school year. And I got that idea from someone off YouTube that there's actually an end of the school year routine. So anyway, again, if you want to look at any of these things a little bit closer, go ahead and just pause the video. I will actually uh, be writing my daily tasks on my plan as I weekly plan. And I will be actually writing in the weekly to-dos on my um, plans as well. Like during my prep times, I actually also work through my lunch time. And that's just another way that I'm efficient and using my time wisely. Because I would much rather work during lunch than have to stay late and miss out more time with my own babies at home. So that's just a sacrifice that I make. Instead of eating lunch with my coworkers in the lunchroom, I eat at lunch in my room. And that way I can just do more things. And you'll see one of my daily tasks is to pump. When I go back to work, I will be pumping. And something that I do is I show up to work an hour early so that I can use my prep times actually in the morning and then I flex time. I pump during my actual prep times. Now I'm back again at the front title page. So I just finished the um, number two, which is the to-do list. And so then I went to number three, which is to plan and prepare to implement the resources. So I put a, what do I need to start on day one with my IAs and volunteers that change? So I can't really actually do that yet because 
again, I don't really know what my IA schedule is, but I do need to get ready and think about getting checklists going or directions for my IAs or volunteers who help me. So I checked it out, but it's not technically done, but I'm still continuing on because at this point I'm kind of in a stall mode on that. And the part B under three was daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, IA, volunteer kind of planner, and I did that, so I checked that off. Then number four was classroom setup planning, and again, even though I have it down as four, I started it a little bit earlier, but I did go ahead and go back, and I checked on YouTube and Pinterest and added things that I wanted to include for my classroom setup, and I just, again, put it on sticky notes. When I actually go into the classroom, I'll probably just lay out all these sticky notes on the table and just kind of go through and make sure that I have each. Number five is, oh, yeah, I did that. Again, so classroom setup, if you look at number four, the classroom setup planning, again, I really want to base that on standards or um, the community that I'm wanting to build. So I want to set it up very purposefully. Number five is classroom setup, and I put parentheses around that because I've thought about it, but I can't technically go in there yet until after Christmas break. And then in January, when the kids come back, it'll be all after fresh. After the classroom setup, number six is expectations and routine planning. So this is actually thinking ahead of time how I want to run my classroom. What is my homework policy going to be? What behavior charts or reinforcements um, am I going to be using? Um, I need to get that newsletter ready, ready to explain to parents so they know on day one um, what's going to be happening. And I also, which is already included in my classroom setup, but I also put it here to start setting up my files by month and day and student folders and all of that. Just so that everything, this check mark is for everything to be ready for, um, not actually to be ready, but for the plans to be in place for how I'm going to run the classroom. The number seven is actually expectations and routine prep. So anything that I need to get my routines going, um, anything that I need to make for parents, et cetera, regarding my policies, I actually need to prepare before day one. So and so I now for number seven, when I go in and I start prepping things, I can be very focused based on the standards on what I want to do. That. So once I have a little bit of prep done, the classroom set up, then I can just actually start planning for week one and start printing things out and just be, you know, ready for the teaching life. Finally, this says schedule. I have two pages for the schedule as I started to brainstorm and think through that, which is actually still part of my routines. Um, and I just started to think about what the components are to get my mind ready for teaching again over the long break. What are my components? What are the time allotments? And what is my day going to look like? This year we have a couple new requirements. So I just wanted to make sure I could fit everything in. So again, I'm not going back to school with a cold mind, but I'm going back to school all warmed up and ready to go. I know what I'm teaching when. And all they have to do is just shift a little bit um, the time allotments and to make sure that everything's accounted for. Um, but basically, I know what I'm going to be doing. All right, that was a long video, but I think that it will be very helpful for some of you, especially for first year teachers or for student teachers. Um, anyone that is really just looking for a better way to start off the year, um, maybe some of my ideas might help you. Also, if you think that there's anything that I should tweak or that anything I forgot or that I should change around, just let me know in the comment section and I can read through that and um, just make it easier for me to start off the year and I can share that with other people as well. Um, and if you found that it was helpful for you, let me know that too because I think there's real power and encouragement and I think it will just make our profession stronger as we are able to share confidently things that we do or things that work for us or even just things that we're trying, you know, off the cuff. If it works, let's share it and um, encourage each other. So take care and we'll see you next time.